results for you in an hour. The polls close. We'll be the first radio show in America to have it. Let's pray to God that the communist on the left doesn't win. He'll burn the country to the ground. The liberal Miliband has already said if he becomes prime minister, he will ban free speech in England, whatever's left of it. He will make it a crime to criticize Islam. I swear to God, he's to the left of the Sharia law people in some cases in England. He is a white Jewish liberal. Did you know that? I know I'm not supposed to mention this, but you know, I'm a social worker at heart, so I know everything. I study these things. Miliband would be the first Jewish prime minister of England, and unfortunately, he's not a conservative Jewish man. He's a far-left radical communist type. In other words, if you wanted England run by the ACLU, you couldn't do better than electing Miliband. That's what's going on in England. That's what's at stake there. Can you imagine from the age of uh, the greatness of the, of the great lion the, of the British Empire to this whimpering nation that's left? Anyway, that'll be in the next hour. We're talking, we're actually talking in shock right now of Michelle Obama at the Whitney Museum saying black people feel uncomfortable in museums. And I'm saying it's a result of paranoia if you feel that. Because when I go to museums, the guards follow me around here in San Francisco. I'm not black. The Filipino guards trail me. They trail me. Sometimes I get upset. They do. I walk around an empty hall. There they are. Wherever I turn, he thinks I'm going to steal a painting or spray paint it. I'm a grown man. I'm a mature man, an older man. Why is he trailing me for? Why does he make me feel comfortable? I don't know. Maybe he's a nut. WSBA Radio, Mike, welcome to the program. Give us the museum comment. Yeah, um, I'm a white American, and uh, with these uh, museums, you got like the Thurston Hell from Gilligan's Island running them. They look down on any working American middle class person. That's well, right. If I go in there, I'm not a poor man. They trail me. The Filipino guards, and there's mainly Filipinos in the guard uh, world here, they stare at me. They follow me around the museum. I, I get very, very uncomfortable. I don't demand the museum give me a private tour. Yeah, but if you don't fit their, you know, thing, you're not welcome. To, you know, so basically, if you're a working class, you know, middle class, what they're trying to destroy, because, you know, the... Uh, so you're saying it's not about race in plain English, and Michelle's full of it. Exactly. So you're saying it's not about black people either? No. It's about how they're dressing these people who are saying they feel uncomfortable, like that woman? It's just about... Uh, just the working class people. America well, what do you have to look like to be left alone in a museum? What do I have to do? I have to get surgery to look like William F. Buckley Jr. with an arched eyebrow and a, and a bow tie? You got to look like... Maybe, maybe if I wore a bow tie and had an arched eyebrow and wore a seersucker suit, they would. Uh, I could pass for white. Maybe, that, maybe that's what I... I could pass for white if I wore a seersucker suit and had an arched eyebrow and a monocle maybe. Maybe I can get a monocle and a, and a uh, bow tie. And a cane and a top hat, and maybe the guards will leave me alone. <laughs> God, you know, you can turn anything into, into, into droll comedy. This is absurd. It's sickening. In case you don't know what we're talking about, it's because you don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about, I don't want to review it. I'm supposed to do it. I do it all the time. It's why I'm good at radio. I'm sick of reviewing it. I am sick of reviewing what I'm talking about. The election in Britain is so important you can't imagine I would say Winston Churchill would be turning over in his grave to think that a communist might win in England. But that would be an understatement. He faced it right after World War II, by the way, the very same dynamics. After World War II, the people wanted socialism, and they threw him out of office. Did you know that? They wanted a free ride. And then we had the terrible years in England of the 50s, when the unions ran the country, and people's benefits were sky high, the laughing stock of British machinery, you know, the tea breaks, walking off the job in the middle of the day, Lucas Electric and all of that. I mean, I own Jaguars. I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Wires that caught fire in the first rainstorm. That's what you get on the unions. But uh, Churchill fought this. He, he knew what was coming, and they threw him out after he was a war hero. They threw him out. Saved England. They threw him out. What else is new under the sun? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. As one of my predecessors, Franklin Roosevelt, once said, remember always that all of us, and you and I especially, are descended from immigrants and revolutionists. Immigrants and revolutionists. Now that's not the story of looking backwards, that's the story of looking forward. That's what we're doing today. You see, there are so many kids in this country who look at places like museums and concert halls and other cultural centers and they think to themselves, well that's not a place for me for someone who looks like me, for someone who comes from my neighborhood. You get the picture. I, I rest my case. I have never, I, okay, I keep saying I have never. They keep topping themselves with their lies and the lowness of their, of their existences. She doesn't feel like she belongs in museums. Kids who are poor or black don't belong in museums. And she said that... Uh, Growing up on the south side of Chicago, I was one of those kids myself, which is a complete lie, by the way, total lie, as you know, but it leads you to ask a question. How come she didn't feel uncomfortable going to an Ivy League school? She went there. I mean, she must have been very uncomfortable. She got a degree there. Uh, and while we're asking the question about being uncomfortable, is she not uncomfortable about flying an Air Force One? I mean, after all, that's more intimidating. See, the implication is that a museum is a white man's place. And there's no place for a black woman in a white man's uh, white museum, even though it's the Wh Whitney Museum. I, I don't know, maybe she, there was the N could have fallen off the, uh, the head of the museum. Maybe the N fell off that day from a windstorm. And it said Whitey Museum, and she became uncomfortable. I don't know the answer. But she was at the Whitney Museum, and she says places like this uncomfortable she's giving a speech there at the Whitney Museum growing up she felt uncomfortable so how come she's not uncomfortable in, in Air Force One how come she wasn't uncomfortable at uh, the Ivy League colleges is she not uncomfortable about being the first first lady to have her mother live in the White House at taxpayer expense is she not uncomfortable about the millions of people who are shocked and appalled at her abuse of taxpayer funds for her junkets around the world. That's what she should be uncomfortable about. It's a nonsense story, but I'm talking about it because the woman is saying this for a reason. She takes a podium like that, and she, what is she using that for? Use your head. What is she doing that for? What did her husband go to a Cinco de Mayo thing and talk about we are revolutionaries and we're not talking about the past, the future? What is he trying to do? If you were in a seminar and a teacher asked you that question, you can answer that easily. Make believe you're in a college seminar, a real college seminar, and yet a professor was trying to teach you about a communist revolutionary couple that took over a nation like this. And every day, in every way, in every speech, they try to, they try to foster this dissent and discord, rather, in the people and foment revolution. So they're not happy enough with what they just did in Baltimore. Now what? What are they on to next? What city's next for them? What's on the horizon? I'll raise the campaign a little bit that I'm talking about. Detroit, minority ruled, a basket case hollowed out. Baltimore, minority ruled, set fire, a basket case, a bust, a bust out job. Now what has been done on the minority rule in Detroit and in Baltimore is being done on a national level by Barack Obama. He's busting out the country the way Detroit was busted out. And the way Baltimore burned, he'd like to burn the nation. But, okay, I'm just a flaming right-winger. I don't see things as they really are. No, you see things as they really are. Things are much better under Barack Obama. Burn, baby, burn. And we can go on with this if you want. And I want to go back now. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I eat on the run. I just ate my lunch during the break, an entire meal. I eat, furt I eat furtively. I eat furtively uh, on the run. I don't eat in high, high expensive restaurants. I really don't feel comfortable in them. I'm like Michelle Obama. When I go into a restaurant with a white tablecloth, I feel uncomfortable. I'd rather eat a sandwich in my kitchen alone. 
because I never would dream that I'd be allowed in a restaurant with a white tablecloth. It's a white man's place. And growing up in the Bronx, I was one of those kids who never ate on a white tablecloth. I ate on oil cloth. So, I mean, I could empathize with her. Yeah, I know that feeling of not belonging in a place like this, she says. Yeah, we read that one. So, I want to go back to the big link up on uh, Drudge last night. It's still up there. It's gotten so much attention. Savage says Obama will arm gangs for race war. So people say, oh, he's crazy. What is he, like, arming gangs? Nuts. They're not going to deputize gangs and give them guns. No. But if you actually listen to the context, once again, instead of being a dummy, like most liberals are, if you don't want to be a dummy and actually understand what I'm talking to you about, you'll see that he already has them in the street all armed. They're armed already. Where do the gangs get the weapons from? Who keeps the gangs away from the people in the middle of any race? Remember what the job of the police is. I'll make it very simple for you because you probably forgot what the police are there for. The job of the police is to protect us from criminals. Gangs are criminals. Mobs that burn things are criminals. The cop's job is to protect us from those mobs using nightsticks, hoses, whatever they had to use, police dogs, rubber bullets. They could have stopped Baltimore from burning. But the revolutionary moron who runs Baltimore, the college student who they gave the job to, told the police to stand down and didn't give them vests and helmets. And now tomorrow in San Francisco, the genius mayor of this city has told the police to wear dress uniforms for the riots that are going to occur from a day of action, so-called, by the vermin of San Francisco. The vermin who don't work for a living. The vermin who God knows what they do for a living. I don't know where they come from. Pipes on their arms at the Oakland City Council. The, you never saw misshapen human beings like this in your life. In my day, they would have been in Ringling Brothers, in, in the freak show. Now they call themselves revolutionaries. The revenge of the freaks. So tomorrow, the freaks are going to have a, a communist action in the city. I don't know who they're mad at this time. We don't know what it's about. And the police, instead of being told to control them, are being told to wear dress uniforms. Don't intimidate them. Don't even wear your shields on your uniform. This is how sickening it's becoming in this demented city and state that I live in. Wear dress uniforms of the type you would wear to a funeral because that's what they're doing to the police under Barack Obama. They've turned policemen into mourners. That's what they're doing. And if you think it's for the betterment of society, you wait and see. You wait and see what's coming if they don't stop this. And now it's on to the callers. But first... I don't know if I want to go to callers yet. I don't know. I think I'll play the second part of the KSFL interview from this morning a little later on. We're going to have the results from England. And is it in this hour? Are uh, they come down yet? Uh, I think Disraeli, by the way, was the first Jewish prime minister. Someone, my friend Jack, said that. But at least he was a nationalist and a patriot. This one, communist, left-wing fanatic, Miliband, he already said last week if he becomes prime minister, he's going to make it illegal to uh, say anything negative about Islam. Can you imagine this? The general of Sharia, Miliband. But what happened in England is happening here. The liberals, through multiculturalism, ushered in so many Muslims that the white demagogues like Miliband are appeasing them by appealing to them. Sound familiar? What they could not win from the general population through policies... They're going to win through demographics. That's called a race war. That's what the liberals specialize in. Now tell me who the biggest loser is going to be from amnesty for illegal aliens from south of the border. It's not primarily the white person in the middle class. It's primarily the poor people. And mainly poor blacks are going to be aced out of any benefits. The benefits are going to be cut. Jobs that remain will be cut. Social services that are given for people who need them are going to be cut and given to the Hispanic illegals as they are already being done. How could black people not see this? I do not understand. Again, I say things that I don't, I, I didn't mean that. Of course I understand. They're brainwashed. What do you mean I don't understand? It's a matter, matter of speech. In high school, I read 30 days to a more powerful vocabulary. I came from an immigrant family and I was impressed with words. My father always read, you know, many newspapers. He wasn't educated, but he tried to understand from the columnists what positions they were taking, left, right, center. 
He read five newspapers a day. I thought he was 